Jackie, welcome to the show. Hello, great to be here. Uh, Jackie, UC Irvine 3 and 1. You guys had a key mm -hmm. matchup against Cal Poly. Um, you guys came out on the losing end of that, but you know, it was a tough game. Talk about the Mustangs and what happened. Um, it was a really tough game to lose. We came into the match knowing that both of us were 2 and 0 um, and tied for first in our conference, so we really wanted to win. And it was our first game home after uh, nine games, so we really wanted it. And it was surprising because we came out really strong the first five minutes. I think we had maybe three shots on goal. And um, they just they weren't ready for it, and so I'm not really sure what happened in the end. It was a little miscommunication. Well, it's interesting. Alex and I were talking soccer last week, and one of the most frustrating things that, that I know about soccer <laughs> is that you can dominate and possess and outshoot the opponent and still not come out with the win. And that's what happened against the Mustangs, you guys. Mm -hmm. Um, had 20 to 7 on shots and I think the shots on goal were 7 to 2 and unfortunately those two goals that went in for Cal Poly were the goals. Yeah, it was really unfortunate. How do you how do you rebound from that when you feel you have controlled the game for so long and you still can't come out with the win? How do you then turn around and face Santa Barbara? Um, sometimes it's nice knowing that you were the, you outplayed your opponent rather than you came in and got killed. So I think we were just taking the same energy that we had from the Cal Poly game and brought it to the Santa Barbara game and came out knowing, okay, we know we know we know what we need to do to win, and so we're going to bring it to the Santa Barbara game. I know that Coach Juniper, when he began here, he had a, his philosophy was to put each game in a box aside whether it was a win or a loss, is that still what you guys do? That was probably the first thing that came out of his mouth when we all brought it back into the huddle. He said, okay, the only game that matters now is Santa Barbara. And so you guys came out against Santa Barbara and scored 3-1. And Laura McGrail um, had a great night. Can you talk about this uh, Gauchos, the matchup with the Gauchos? Santa Barbara is an interesting team because they're typically pretty talented, but they tend to give up sometimes when you start to dominate them and so I feel like that's what happened on Sunday and especially with Lowe's goal her first goal is a great goal and it kind of put them away a little bit well let's take a look at the games coming up this week you guys are at Pacific at Davis the Central Valley swing uh, Pacific is three and two oh and two and one sorry that was not very smooth oh and two and one <laughs> in conference uh, can you? What do you expect to see from Pacific, and how are you going to prepare for them? Pacific is always a tough game for us because they're a, they always bring it with fight and physicalness, so or physicality. So we're just looking to um, match their physicality and just go after it and just play our game that we know how to play. Do you guys feel you're a physical team? Sometimes we can be physical. I wouldn't say that's our dominant characteristic, but. We can bring the physicality, yes. You see your mind super tactical. Um, would you say, you know, Coco Goodson, Rachel Wood, both in the back, very imposing figures. Um, but the rest of the field, you guys are, are pretty quick and small. Was that, is that correct? Uh, for the most part, yes. I mean, Laura's uh, taller, Zuri's taller. Um, but typically, we're a smaller team, yes. Um, and then UC Davis, 7-5-1. Two one and zero. Oh. Talk about the Aggies. They are an interesting team as well. We've done pretty well in the past. I think two years ago we beat them at home like six zero, oh, and then we went up there and either lost or tied to them last year. And um, they're also a team that's willing to work really hard, and um, they'll normally give it their all, and they normally give us a pretty tough game. So that's the game we're really gonna have to bring it as well. Well, let's st take a step back and talk about you. Um, your journey to this point, your senior year, wasn't really easy. <laughs> you didn't have a lot of uh, playing time in your first three years, mm -hmm. and now you're starting this year. Talk about your freshman year and the next two years and how you dealt with you know, not seeing as much time as you would have liked. Um, it's definitely been an up and down journey for me, but I wouldn't have it any other way looking back now. I, really, I feel like I've really matured through all of it, and um, it was tough coming in. Typically with freshman, I wasn't expecting freshman year. I wasn't expecting to start, 
but then the two years after that, I ha I struggled a lot um, confidence wise and just really wanting to play and being like bought into the team. Um, but there's my teammates really encouraged me and that was really like everyone always supported me and that was really nice. And Scott and I sometimes had our differences, but we he, I knew he's always supporting me in the end of it. You had to play behind some talented defenders, Sarah Devine, who's on staff right now, Judy Christopher, Coco Goodson. What did you learn watching them play ahead of you? Um, I definitely learned how to um, just always give it your all. Those three girls, I really look up to them, admire them, and they've always supported me as well. And mm -hmm. um, I know they're the fiercest competitors I know. They never give up. They always are there to win, even in practice. It was all is always about winning, always about trying your hardest. And so it's really good to play behind them and watch them and learn how to um, bring that competitiveness to the field. Well, the, the ironic part of it is you're not, you're not even in the backfield now. You're starting at forward. So when did that transition happen, and how did you make the adjustment? I, the transition happened probably halfway through our preseason. Um, we were having some trouble getting organized in the back, and they want and Rachel had come from UNC and been successful at UNC and um, organized the back there, and so they decided to put her back there, and it was a great fit, and it's really worked out for us. And I actually prefer playing forward because I get to score and be up top, and there's a lot more freedom up top, and so I, I'm happy with it. You and you actually started your freshman year, and you started as a cent central midfielder, so you're pretty versatile. Um, what positions did you play in high school? Did you play all three? Yeah, I played all three. Not normally forward, but most of the time center mid, and then I'd play center back if my team needed it. Your coach, Scott Juniper, um, has described you as a player with a very good soccer IQ, and you're very good in the air. And you're not very tall. <laughs> That's not a slight, but, you know, we have seen, Co like you said, Coco Goodson, mm -hmm. Zuri Walker, Rachel Wood. What are the keys to being good in the air and to... to you know, put away the ball like, you know, Abby Wambach, for example. It's really all about timing. Even if you are tall, it's it's more about timing and being able to read the ball as it's coming down or um, read the flight of the ball if it's a goalie punt. And um, I feel like I'm getting better at that in my last couple games of my college career. But for a while, I lost it a little bit, and now I'm starting to be able to position my body better to know where the ball is going to be. Now, in soccer, do they worry about verticals? I know that, you know, volleyball it's important and basketball it's important. And I know Nagler has that pole with the <laughs> slats on yeah. it and, and I see all the student athletes jumping and trying to reach the highest height. How um, how much do you focus on that and work on that when you are strength training and conditioning? It just depends on if you're already ha if you're already gifted. Some I don't have a very good vertical jump and there's people on the team that could probably jump higher than I can, so um, it's really about your core and your flexibility too, and so we try to work on it in weights as much as possible and just building our strength. And Who on the team is dangerous in the air? Uh, Zuri, Haley, Rachel, Cami. anytime any of those players are in, our coach always wants us to be serving the ball to them. Um, you also um, are described as someone who can hold the ball well and you can play with your back to the goal. Can you Explain what that means to some of our fans who may not understand, understand soccer as well. Um, typically, if you're a forward, you can you can receive the ball underneath, which means you receive it with your back to the goal, and you kind of have to position your body right to um, hold the defender off the ball because they're obviously going to be doing anything they can to get the ball from you. And so I think I can position my body well to hold someone off and play the ball back to one of my teammates. What are you looking for when you're holding that ball and your back is to the goal? Are you looking for runners down the sides? Or are you just looking to kick it back to someone who's in a better position? Um, kind of what goes through your mind as you're holding the ball in that situation? I'm thinking, okay, don't lose it, don't lose it. <laughs> play a good ball, don't play it to someone um, that has someone else on them because it can sometimes turn into a counterattack if you play it in the wrong way or the wrong person. But typically our coach wants us to lay it off to someone who has a better vision of the field than you do.